Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's going on with artificial intelligence and the war that has just been launched by China to get more and more STEM graduates. Now, just in case you're not familiar with the concept of STEM, this is the acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. And basically any degree that's in that field is basically like a science degree and it gives you potential to work in AI. And obviously AI now seems to be the future of the entire universe. That's what everybody's talking about. If you look at any share that's listed on the stock exchange that has a link to AI, you'll have seen its price take off over the last 12 months or so. This is the new revolution. Everybody wants to work in AI. And interestingly, Donald Trump recently introduced an increase in the cost of the H-1B visa. And H-1B visas in the USA are used for overseas workers that want to be brought over to the USA by companies. And a lot of those workers are working in technology. And he's increased the cost of that from around about $5,000 per employee to $100,000. Now, obviously, that is a huge increase. And a lot of technology businesses were using those visas to transfer people in and out on a regular basis. But clearly, they won't be doing that now because it will cost them an absolute fortune. And in response to that change in the price of the H-1B visa, China have now come in with a new classification of visa, which they're calling a K visa, which starts on the 1st of October 2025, so basically immediately, and it's designed to attract STEM graduates from all around the world. So if we have a quick look at the terms of the K-Visa, well, the terms that have been released so far, we don't know the exact details because they haven't actually been provided. But key to this is that no job offer or employer sponsorship is required. So if you've just graduated in a STEM subject, anywhere in the world, you can apply for one of these visas and then move to China. And it allows a wide scope of activities in terms of what jobs you can take on. Could be research, teaching, cultural exchange, entrepreneurship, business, and obviously AI would be the main reason why people would be going to China. It also offers longer stays, multiple entries, and easier renewals compared to the previous visa system. And it's a very simple application process, fewer documents and less bureaucracy. And the target group that China is trying to attract in are recent graduates and early career professionals working in STEM, international researchers, postdocs and young academics, and entrepreneurs in technology and science related fields. So that's basically the hot area that everybody wants to bring in at the moment. Now, just before we go on any further today, could I ask you to hit that subscriber button, please? I know it's a pain when I keep saying this, but I'm trying to get my numbers up. It really does help me with the algorithm. So if you could just hit it now, it won't cost you anything. That would really make my day. Now, if we have a look at STEM graduates in the USA, just as a comparison to see how attractive these individuals are. Well, currently they make up around about six and a half percent of the workforce just on the STEM definition. However, if you widen that definition to everything related to science, which basically would cover what China is looking to attract, it's actually around 24%. So that's a big chunk of the US population. We're talking around about 11 million people at the moment, and it's projected that that's going to grow by more than 8% each year between 2024 and 2034. So over the next 10 years, there's going to be an explosion in these sorts of jobs. And these people are being paid more than most. So on average, if you've got a STEM qualification, then you're getting $19,000 more than the average worker and the median salary. So through the middle of the salary range is over $100,000 compared with around $47,000 for non-STEM now, if you've been following the channel, you'll probably be aware that China currently has an unemployment problem with regards to its graduates. Lots of people are graduating from Chinese universities and aren't able to find work. In fact, if we have a look at the latest data for Chinese youth unemployment, this is for ages 16 to 24, you can see that in August there was a sharp rise and unemployment is sitting at around about 18.9% amongst the young in China. So it seems strange that they've created a new visa to specifically attracting graduates from overseas. However, 
what we're talking about here is a difference between the jobs that are available and the skills of the graduates coming out of Chinese universities, because the ones with STEM qualifications are finding jobs relatively easy. It's everybody else that doesn't want to take on the lower paid, lower skilled roles. So China currently has a surplus of local graduates, around 12 million new ones in 2025. But unfortunately, they're qualified in things like business, literature or social sciences, which don't really fit the bill of what China is looking to recruit. And the K visa is aimed specifically at STEM specialists. So the jobs that are available are in areas like AI, semiconductors, biotech, advanced engineering. So China actually has a shortage of people with those sort of qualifications. So we're looking at an international recruitment campaign here. And China is competing with countries such as the USA, Canada, the UK, Singapore, and the European Union. And by offering this new K visa at a very low price and easy to apply for, then it's going to be attracting in all of these graduates. Now, there's also a reverse brain drain going on in China because many Chinese students study overseas and then remain in the country that they've studied in. So many of those will be in the USA. They will have got these sort of qualifications and then taken on jobs in Silicon Valley and those sort of places, and they don't come back to China. So China, by offering this new visa system, is trying to lure in not just genuine overseas international people, but actually Chinese nationals who've gone and studied abroad, who've decided not to return to China after their studies have ended. One of the other things that China is trying to achieve is to become more international because historically it's had a very inward looking campaign. It's been recruiting lots of Chinese nationals and not a lot of people are wanting to go to China to work. But by bringing in people with overseas experience, they'll be able to collaborate more in global projects. They'll have more international partnerships and cultural exchange, and it will increase China's image and it will become more of an open, innovative center. So it becomes self-fulfilling. The more people you attract in from overseas, the more it becomes attractive. And so people are happy to go there. But of course, China wants to become a world leader at the moment. It is lagging behind the USA. NVIDIA and lots of other businesses coming out of the States are at the cutting edge of AI. China isn't there yet but it wants to be because it's the second largest economy in the world. So it doesn't want to be left behind. And it's giving a signal to the world that it wants to recruit the brightest young scientists from all around the globe. It's making it much easier to apply to go to China and it's much cheaper to do so. And if it can create a global hub where lots of people are converging to try to develop AI at a faster rate, then it becomes more exciting and it'll bring in more of that talent. So let's have a look at how the two visa systems compare between China and the USA currently, if you're a STEM graduate. Now, at the moment in the USA, you would need a US employer to sponsor you and then pay for that H-1 visa, which is now $100,000. However, in China, you don't need a sponsor or an employer. Now, we don't know the exact cost yet, but it's likely to be low. It will be in the low thousands, possibly even less, just to attract in all of those fresh graduates. In terms of the number of these visas that are available, we talked about it in a recent video. In the USA, it's capped at 85,000 and there's a lottery system in place because there's an oversubscription. Well, there has been historically, whether there will be with the new $100,000 fee remains to be seen. In terms of China, we don't know the details yet, but it's likely to be much more open and many more visas will be available if there is sufficient demand. The US visa lasts for three years and can be extended to six years. The Chinese one is likely to be multi-year and renewable, but we don't have the full details on that yet. In terms of flexibility, in the USA, it is limited to the role that you're being sponsored for by your employee. As we previously discussed in China, it's much more wide ranging. So from that point of view, it's more attractive. In terms of residency, it's not clear yet in China whether or not you can become a Chinese resident. In the USA, you can potentially but it takes quite a long time to get there. And then finally, looking at the attractiveness of going to work in both the USA and China. I think there are very different perceptions at the moment. 
In the USA at the moment, there are over 30 million people working in the workforce that were not born in the USA. It has a long-standing culture of immigration. People go to work to the, in the USA. In fact, it's probably one of the most attractive destinations in the world in terms of being able to go, make a success of both your career and your life, and create a whole new sense of being. In China, it isn't quite the same. Currently, there are around 1.4 million total immigrants out of a population of 1.4 billion. So it is a fraction of the working population. In terms of the trends, well, historically, the USA has been super attractive and remains so. Donald Trump is trying to actually cut down on immigration at the moment and deporting lots of people who don't have the right paperwork. But it's still very attractive for lots of people around the globe. China historically hasn't really been in that bracket. Not a lot of people have long-term aspirations to go and live and work and reside in China. And one of the reasons for that is obviously the language. In the USA, obviously, everybody is speaking English. In China, it's predominantly Mandarin. And Mandarin isn't spoken in most countries in the world. It's not taught in many schools in the West. And so going there and having to learn Mandarin from scratch would obviously be a huge challenge. And I think that is probably one of the biggest barriers that China faces at the moment, in addition to the cultural differences between China and the rest of the world. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because we've been following what's going on in the USA. And obviously, Donald Trump is making lots of changes at the moment. And the increase in the cost of the H-1B visa from $5,000 to $100,000 obviously is designed to stop people moving to the USA with their employer, making it more difficult for companies to make that decision. Donald Trump wants US residents to be hired to fill all of those roles rather than just somebody coming from overseas. So he's trying to make it a much more difficult decision if you're going to bring somebody across from elsewhere. Now, in response to that, China have come up with this new visa system. So what they're trying to do is identify an opportunity that certain people may decide is ideal for them in terms of low cost, but also welcoming in graduates from all across the globe who've got a qualification in STEM, science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. And one of the reasons why China is doing that is because it needs those people and those skills to be able to continue developing its artificial technology industry. Because as it stands at the moment, the USA is streets ahead of China. So it needs to attract in the talent. And I think China's spotted the fact that these h one visa increases, the cost increases, are going to potentially mean that there is less opportunity to go and work in the States at a time when this industry is absolutely exploding. So I think it's been quite a smart move from China's perspective. But as we've identified in today's video, it isn't all about cost and it isn't all about just being able to go and get a job. You have to be happy living in the country. You have to be comfortable with the culture and the language and everything else that goes with it. And I think that's probably one of the biggest hurdles that China are going to get over because historically it hasn't been a country that's welcomed in a lot of immigration. You don't have lots of people trying to move to China to create a better life for themselves and to live the Chinese dream in the same way as you do with the USA and the American dream, because that's really been the holy grail for people who want to move overseas and get a job and make a better life for themselves. The USA is probably the number one target market for anybody who has those aspirations. China is going to be well down that list because historically, Overseas workers haven't been prominent in Chinese industry. They don't have a lot of leaders of their businesses coming from overseas. It tends to be Chinese nationals who are running all of the big corporations. So the opportunity isn't quite as great as it is in the USA. And of course, the language is going to be a massive barrier for most people because Outside of China, there aren't a huge amount of people who are speaking Mandarin on a daily basis, unlike English, which obviously lots of people who are bilingual can speak English as their second language. So 
from a cultural point of view and just from a social perspective, it's going to be an easier decision to move to the USA. However, costs will also play a part in this. And when you're looking at an increase from 5,000 to 100,000, employers will definitely be thinking twice now about moving people to the USA. In the video that I made recently talking about that, over 70% of those visas were taken up by Indian companies, technology-based, who go to the USA and then bring lots of their staff over from India, many of whom come on a rotation basis. So they might come for six months at a time and then somebody else comes in and so it goes on. But those companies are going to have to really work out whether the economics work on that. Paying 100000 for each one of those individuals is going to be expensive compared to what they were paying historically. So we may see a huge reduction in the number of people moving to the USA on that visa system. And this could throw open lots of opportunity for countries like India and other nations that are strong in technology deciding that they can now go and work in China because it's more cost effective. And also, if you start getting a Silicon Valley equivalent in China with lots of overseas talent coming into it, and maybe there's more opportunity to rise through the ranks and become senior within Chinese corporations, then maybe it will become more attractive. So I wanted to post this video just so you were in the know, that you understand what's happening with regards to the implications. Every time a policy is introduced in the USA, it has global implications. And the H-1B visa change from 5,000 to 100,000, whilst in isolation, it just looked like it was going to create more jobs for US citizens. Now in China, we've got a different policy, which is trying to attract in lots of overseas qualified people who have STEM graduate degrees to bring them in and train them up and to develop China's AI capabilities. So it really just shows you what the knock-on implications of one policy in one country can be on the rest of the globe. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscriber button. Thank you also to everyone that's supporting me, either through Patreon or YouTube membership or Buy Me A Coffee membership or Super Thanks or Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you so much for that support. And here's something to put a smile on your face.